Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending July the 30th, 2021. Well, on a weekly basis, uh, the S&P 500 is uh, hanging out in the overbought territory and uh, finishes July uh, very strong, although pulling back uh, somewhat this week. Uh, up, up near record highs and uh, just, just pulling back. The NASDAQ uh, doing much the same thing but closing uh, lower and it's not yet uh, overbought. It will do in large part to some of the earnings came back. Oh, Amazon was a big disappointment. That pulled the S&P 500 back and uh, a lot of the other uh, uh, indexes as well. So the money spread uh, to uh, small and mid caps and so they joined the party for the week Although uh, both are positive and up, uh, small caps are hitting their head at, at, uh, at, at a middle level of uh, resistance, so about an 18 to 20 day uh, moving average range of resistance and range, not rain, range of resistance and then um, uh, mid cap uh, just above breaking through that uh, same resistant level on the moving average and, uh, and, then, and then pulling back a little bit to use that then as support. So mid caps using uh, that, uh, what used to be resistance as support now, and small caps uh, banging their head on, on, on that uh, same uh, period moving average. So what we're seeing here, and, and, and sure enough, you know, the 10 year pulling back down and then hanging around that 200 day, uh, flirting above and beyond, you know, that 120, 118 to 137 range right there. It used to be 152 back uh, home when things uh, looked, um, actually, actually it was a little dicier looking back then. It was more uncertain then. We know what the vaccines do now. Uh, but uh, because of the, the, the variants, et cetera, and these COVID uh, outbreak uh, fears uh, looming very large uh, for the fall that's, a, that's part of some of this uh, fear trade. But what, it, what the bottom line on this all is, really, is that in order to get return, whether it be in fixed income, you're looking at yields, which are just low. Really, I, I saw something in passing, and I may throw this in the blog, uh, the interest rates haven't been this low in 5,000 years, so five millennia says a lot. Uh, need, to, need to go into that, but what a headline, huh? And uh, so, so we know that you know yields are all time low. So you're you're actually taking risk by being safe going into fixed income, even if you're in risk free, because you're buying at highs, okay. And uh, and so you're carrying that yield to maturity. Uh, so that there's intrinsic risk in, in not losing principal, but in losing op in an opportunity cost terms. Uh, and then, you know, switch over to the equity side of the, well, and uh, before I switch to the equity side of the fence, what I was going to say, if you stay in corporate bonds, then you have intrinsic risk of default, okay? That's there, and it, and, it, and it gets greater because of the fear trade as time goes by, because there's a reason these yields are low. It, it's a dicey economic period. You're looking at international uh, concerns about uh, the, uh, the the Delta variant and whether or not that's going to get worse and then as well as uh, domestic concerns because we're getting spikes. Uh, Dr. Gottlieb came on today. He said, uh, and, and, and this sounded more anecdotal to me, but he did say a million new cases per day domestically uh, in the United States. So uh, yeah, that's, a, that's, an, uh, that, that's an eyebrow raiser. Uh, moving into the equity side, you've got very high price earnings multiples. Amazon not looking uh, 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 so great on, on Outlook, but, but envision this. Um, if, the, if GDP grew to 9% for June, okay, and that's what it looks like the reports are going to come in at, around that 9%, tremendous, just tremendous, but that's likely to be the high point for the year and moving forward because as we revert to the mean, it's a matter of time, right? We always have a reversion to the mean, then you're looking, moving back from that tremendous amount of growth back towards the average long term, which was more around 2%. So that's a big range. So equities, you have a lot of risk in there. Um, and so uh, as prices begin to pull back, how do you continue to get growth and yield in terms? Of, well, you know, in terms of dividends because profits uh, 
may pull back, earnings pull back, and so that, that's going to impact dividends at some point. So the question then becomes, is the average investor or the average retiree person uh, looking for retirement investing, are they becoming more accustomed to accepting increasing risk levels uh, in their risk tolerance, or must they become more accustomed to accepting increased risk levels in retirement uh, in investing levels may be a better question. So from this point, moving forward and in the next couple of weeks, I thought that we would start looking at alternative solutions to this problem. Uh, we've got some uh, new areas that are opening up in, in terms of structured uh, notes that may be not so much important for the fixed income side to provide that, but maybe move, moving over into the equity side and looking at gaining a, a additional uh, growth that way. Uh, another solution is, um, is, is a new one out and more in the safe money market, but what's allowing a greater risk and therefore some greater upside potential um, in the uh, while protecting principles so you can put your gains at risk but the principal stays safe so that's a solution uh, in the FILA market uh, that that, that uh, we would like to go into uh, either in the next couple of weeks or the next week or the week after that and then uh, start looking again at uh, at the bond markets because th there may be indications you know last week maybe we were thinking the bond markets have it wrong now with the new information coming in uh, uh, on, on, on all the different areas uh, and then what, what happened uh, in the Olympics. You, know, you can kind of see the, uh, the concern that's going on in Japan uh, concerning COVID and, and its impact worldwide. Now, the UK just opened up uh, last, you know, just a couple of weeks ago. So uh, these are all going to have impact on, on equities uh, going forward. And, 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 and an investment strategy. So over the next couple of weeks through the dog days of August and summer, uh, then um, we will start looking at those uh, areas, perhaps uh, sit out and, and look for the, to this space for information on a webinar uh, because uh, a lot of this may be really good material uh, for people that are interested in looking at changing because definitely changes in the wind. All right. Stay safe and happy and I'll see you next time.